But from the style, okay, so if they are, but what would we really say from the style? <laughs> we can get used to it. <laughs> you are asking a bunch of computer nerds for fashion advice. Yeah, exactly, because I have no clue myself. That's why I have to ask. Hello everybody, how's it going? Thanks for uh, tuning in again. Uh, ist Ben Eder the von Neumann architecture? Uh, yeah, basically. Well, uh, wait, we can actually check this in a moment. Um, von Neumann, I, I'm not quite sure. I think he mentioned something in the early episodes and I don't quite remember the von Neumann architecture. Mm. Yeah, the von Neumann architecture has like, a different buses for control bus, address bus, and data bus, I believe, or something like that. So maybe it's not quite that, but at least it has shared memory. That uh, That's the thing. Uh, no different data or code memory. But anyway, uh, Dogo is actually with me. He is laying here on the ground. I'm sure some point he builds up the confidence to sh say hi to chat as well. Um, in case you didn't uh, see that, uh, and the reason also why I'm so late today is because I was on a podcast last night to Am American Evening Times. So it was like it started at 3.30 a.m. my time and it ended at 5.30 a.m. The uh, VOD of that podcast is also available here on this Twitch channel if you check out the past videos. will also be uploaded to Live Overflow 2, of course, at some point. Uh, but it's also available, obviously, at the podcast place. So that was the... Uh, Thug Crowd Podcast, Heart Chat, or whatever it's, uh, not quite sure how it's called again. Uh, so yeah, if you wanna check that out, we talked a little bit about news, and uh, here's the link in uh, to, the, to the podcast, you will find the word there. Uh, we talked a bit about news for the first hour, and then in the second hour, we did like a Q&A uh, with me. I was the guest for that episode, uh, so we just talked a little bit about making videos and uh, how I got started and stuff like that. I'm saving you from a boring night on Netflix. Oh, now you put the pressure on me. I'm not so sure if I can deliver if I can deliver that. But uh, yeah, so <laughs> I'm, I know the screen doesn't see look too much different for you right now, but actually some stuff on my setup has changed again. So uh, first of all, my overhead has changed. I used a different attachment that arrived today. This way, it's less obtrusive uh, in the camera. I have put this camera on a kind of a different uh, attachment that is like attached to like a like a shelf over there, so um, it doesn't. Um, it's it's just a little bit differently. It doesn't make much of a difference for you. I have also uh, got a a small attachment here to this rig over here. So I'm not sure if you can tell, but this white thing here is the phone. So when we set up the thermal camera, it, it can stay still and I don't have to hold it and it doesn't shake and stuff like this. So the thermal camera just then uh, can film this here. Uh, so there's that. I'm still waiting on, on a couple of things, mainly like a second light, like something like an overhead light. I had been using this here as an overhead light, but this runs on two AA batteries and uh, I drain like two or three per stream. So this thing is just like eating uh, electricity and so I, I need one that uses just a proper power plug um, and stuff and so I can, uh, I don't have to change batteries constantly and it's a little bit bigger uh, to, to add a bit more uh, light. Uh, so yeah, so yesterday on stream was kind of boring. We didn't really do much we actually exchanged the LEDs. So let me show you on the on the close-up camera. We have replaced these LEDs with a flathead LED. So I guess you can see especially here. They are not round at the top, they're actually flat. They are like cut off. And uh, they are not as bright, but they look really, really red. And so I think it looks better. Did I miss the makeup part? Uh, we don't do this every episode. Uh, check out my YouTube channel if you're interested for makeup tutorials. And I guess today we will continue working on the RAM module. So this is uh, what is basically uh, coming up now. Uh, okay, there's one other story I need to tell you. There's one other story. Okay, wait, let me see. I haven't tested this before, but I'm uh, trying this out now. Let me go to this view. Let's see. Mm. Okay, cool. 
I put it now in black and white because basically I want you to, it, it's like history right now, okay? Like this is old times, this is like last week, okay? This is like pretty old. And I want you to uh, think back of what has happened uh, last week. And so let me uh, retell you something that happened today. And for that to fully understand it, to fully understand the whole story, we gotta start again at the beginning. So let me reenact how we first dealt with wires uh, uh, the pa at the beginning of, of this whole series. So when I had to strip wires, I had I cut them off and then I had to use uh, pliers, something like this. And, and then I had to hold my cutting, like here, this here, had to hold it like this, put it over there and then carefully hold it at a certain like closing angle and then pull and that would strip the wire, okay? And that kind of works, uh, but it's very tedious and it's prone to error. Sometimes you snap it off and it's not great. So this is what happened. Then in this epic moment that you probably remember, you can also check it out on the YouTube channel, Life Overflow 2, I went out into the world and I had bought this wire stripper that should hopefully help us to then help us strip the wires. But it turns out that this wire cutter is extremely terrible. So when I would hold it like this and pull, like see it doesn't f fully work right now, it couldn't be adjusted. And the worst part was that in the front where it's holding the wires um, is like a small metal edge that would cause the wire to get uh, punctured there and sometimes it would strip from there or would just like damage it like that and so this was awful this was wasted money and uh, it was terrible and I was suffering and I wanted a new one and then finally I think on Saturday maybe or so the really good wire cutter arrived and this thing is amazing everybody who has been there on stream has heard me like going absolutely nuts about this so this is like a, a good wire cutter that just does its job really really well just put in there wire you click it and bam it's stripped simple as that it was amazing and now we come to today okay it's today wait something this thing fell now on my laptop god damn ah well whatever okay so today i was in my room okay so this happened earlier uh, now now it's today we are back in the present and so I was here in my room picking up a little bit from this from the past streams and why and I was uh, here this is my trusty workbench okay and so I have tools in there and then I was like putting like tools away and stuff and I thought hey I should put this away this is trash I guess I could throw it away but for now let's put it in my toolbox here okay so, and, and, and this is what happened. I opened it up and then I stood like this for like 30 seconds. Why do I have a wire stripper? Why is there a wire stripper in there? I don't remember that I owned this. I have no clue where this is from. I completely forgot that I have a wire stripper. Why did I go out and buy this? I had one. I have no clue. I, I cannot remember that I ever bought this. I don't know in what context I bought this. I don't know why I have this. I don't know why I own this. I don't understand why it's in my toolbox here. And this just literally happened like an hour or half an hour before I started the stream when I was picking up. What the hell? So I haven't even tried it yet. I don't know if it actually works better. I, I checked the, the front holding part and it, it looks much better. So it should work. But uh, it might work better. But let's see. I haven't even tried it yet. So the, here, you are with me now. Let's try this out. Okay, uh, where's my clipper? <laughs> Maybe I was drunk. Yeah. <coughs> okay, so let's try this out. I have no clue if this works. This completely baffled me. Like, I don't understand why I have this. It makes no sense. Uh, 
so this can also be adjusted here. I'm not quite sure what this changes. I don't see anything visible, but let's just try and see what happens. Okay, kind of strips, but uh, wait, maybe I tried to strip too much there. Oh no, it pulled out the metal part. That's why it was so long suddenly. Here's now this is floppy here. Okay, I mean, okay, this was a terrible one too. So now I feel a bit better. This one was terrible anyway. So uh, let's see, can I somehow... I don't understand this metal thing. Same with the other one. This doesn't seem to affect anything when I turn it. Okay, but this one also looks terrible. When I look in there and look at the blades there. Okay, yeah, okay. So I'm so happy that this is terrible. But yeah, whatever. Okay, so this is also trash. So that was my story for today. Who is that person behind you? It's a dog, actually. It's not a person. There's a dog here on the ground, you don't see him, but this person was just trolling to make me turn around, so I trolled back about the truth that there's a dog behind me. I guess we were just like a minute or so in, so let's just restart this whole video. In the last video, we looked at the 74LS189, which is the SRAM chip. So next I'll do the same thing for the second pair of chips. We really got to be careful with uh, with this because uh, I decided to connect it differently, as you can see. Uh, because uh, these RAM chips have like four bits input each, uh, or output, and these, uh, these XOR chips have, I believe, six gates per chip. So instead of like wiring them to the other side, I decided to only use uh, two here and uh, uh, yeah, two here and two here for like each on the sides. You see what I mean. And he made he connected them in order to this single chip. That's why he changes sides. So that's something we really need to pay attention to. That later when we uh, take the output from here, that we make sure that we t keep the correct order because we need to yeah pay attention to that. And then same thing over on this side. Just hook up a little jumper. Okay, now I guess I know why he did that. So he can get these here, so <laughs> LEDs in line. This will not quite work for there. us. Oh, well. I should have watched, I and guess, a bit more of the video. Pins two, four. But yeah. we also have more space on, uh, on our board to the right. We should check the overall picture again if, um, uh, if we have space there. I'm always outsmarted by Ben Eater. Oh, except when we did the ALU. He made a mistake, we didn't. Out of the RAM chip, there's a, a pin two is a chip select, and it's an active low. Uh, and that basically allows us to enable or disable each of the chips. And in our case, we always want them to be enabled. So what I'm going to do uh, is. Thanks, Newells, for the bits. Thank you so much. On both of these chips low, so that both of these chips will always be enabled. And then to control whether the output of these chips is actually going out on the bus, I'm going to use the 74LS245 that we've used uh, many times before in our registers, which is this 8-bit. Uh, uh, oh, sorry, I, I got distracted by the bits. Which is this 8-bit. Uh, 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 Crap, now he uses that space over there. <laughs> uh, Tri-state buffer. 10 over here. Is okay, so how do we deal with the LEDs here for our build? Let, let's just figure this out really quick. Uh, this is kind of annoying, especially the order of the... Okay, maybe... Should, okay, wait, I need help. What do you think? Should, you, should we rewire this, that it is the same as Ben, that these LEDs look the same? Or should we try to make this work first? Uh, what are inside the chips? That's a good question, and there was actually... I recently saw a really good video uh, showing how chips look inside. Let me see, was this off on Hackaday? Yeah, this video, it's just five minutes. Let's just watch it really quick. It's excellent, it's really great. So let's start with a still image from the microscope. This will be a little easier to see because it's holding still. This structure up here is an individual transistor. It's an NPN bipolar transistor and I have a little acrylic model of it here in my hands. I have another website that I can show you. It's called uh, Silly Zoo. So 
I had like hardware security in university and we were learning a little bit about how you can reverse engineer these integrated circuits. And so on this website you can find, um, let's see, uh, it's basically, as the description says, a layman's guide to IC reverse engineering. And um, uh, on these, on it explains here kind of like how it works and, and how, you know, how on these uh, integrated circuits, how these gates uh, look like. And then not only that, it has actual pictures. So here you see real world examples of uh, how certain gates look like. Uh, so you see here the inputs, s the different layers of imaging. So these are real like microscopic images uh, with like an electronic microscope probably uh, at least these here, I guess, uh, done from a D chip that was opened with like various acids or, or maybe even grinding or something like that. But yeah, so, and, and you can like literally trace these. So I guess here's even a logic challenge. I haven't done this, but here you can see like the metal layer, the silicon layer, and then you can kind of like try to draw that yourself. Like you try to actually like connect all the things that you see in these images. And then you try to work out uh, where the connections are, and then, yeah. Hey, do you want to say hi to Chad? Come here. Come here. Say hi to Chad. Come here. Come here. Hey, Frieza. Come here. Come here. Come here. Don't embarrass me. Say hi to Chad. Uh, come on. Uh, say hi to Chad. Let's not spoil. I don't know. I, I don't want to learn about this right now. This is something I want to learn later, but uh, it's, I guess, a standard here if you are curious. Um, um, blue line, I guess. Yeah, HD, the thing that you said uh, appears here in the... I don't want to see it. I want, don't want to learn about it now. It's for later. But here, chat, have a look. Remember it. Three, two, one, go. Oh, holy crap. A tier two sub. You are my first tier two sub. Thanks, SDK. Uh, my full-time job is uh, working as a freelancer. I, I do security. I'm a security consultant. This becomes the first LED, and that first LED becomes the first input here. Okay, so that's just I need to know which order I like to connect this from. Ben's solution of the seven segment display is so elegant. Well, I haven't, uh, I, we haven't, I haven't been there yet, but I've seen that he used one, I think. Uh, like, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. But yeah, he has quite some clever solutions. Also, I really like, I'm not sure if you have been there or seen that the how to do the tools complement for the other. That's also very elegant. I really like that one too. <coughs> Basically he uses XOS chips to invert and then for the tools complement to, you need to add one to it. And this to add that single, to add that one to it, he just uses then the the carry input of the first adder. So he just includes like one carry bit. And that's just that's just so perfect. By the way, I'm curious. Um, so last night, like I said, I was on this podcast, right? And I streamed also from this channel here. Uh, so I um, I went live for like about two hours or so last night, it was like my time, like 3 a.m. to 5.30 a.m. But it was kind of like prime time in the US. And uh, during the night, I had like on average, uh, sorry, wait, this goes over here. Uh, overnight, I had on average like 30 viewers or so and now we have 130 so that tells me that you are all European right 
like the reason why nobody was uh, was there at night was that that uh, you are mostly all from from European countries or maybe even like even further east, uh, maybe maybe uh, uh, yeah, further east, whatever, even until to India or something, right? Does that make sense? EU, EU, one person from the US so far, Netherlands, EU, France, Chile, wow, okay. Uh, EU, Switzerland, Belgium, German, Dutch, Romania, Lithuania, US work time, Norway, Switzerland. Well, tonight is also, again, like we are a bit late in the stream. So yes, I can uh, see a bit more US maybe even today. But yeah, like that was just an interesting observation I had um, uh, yesterday uh, was was just, uh, yeah, interesting to see. But yeah, I, I, I feel like we have a lot more EU viewers. Also the Twitch statistics show that. Uh, so when I look at where you know the countries are from, then actually most of them are Germany, and after that maybe UK or maybe US, but then they kind of share a space with UK and US or something like that. So um, uh, yeah, so so that's interesting because my YouTube channel is predominantly the US. So uh, on on YouTube it's by far most US, and then quite a little bit further down is then like UK and Germany uh, um, and stuff like this. So I find it interesting. I wonder if it's just the time thing, just like because obviously I'm probably trend more towards EU times than US times. So uh, I wonder if, uh, if, if that has, if that's solely the effect there. Yeah, just an interesting observation. Why is the stream only available in 1080p? Uh, that's because we are affiliate plebs and Twitch says, sorry, we need to use the whole transcoding CPU power that we have uh, for all our VIP streamers and we can't uh, give you transcoding uh, as an affiliate. And so that's why it's only now available in the same format that I stream with. I'm wondering if you separate the control from the RAM, would you have to change the architecture? Uh, I, I feel like the term architecture becomes really fuzzy when we talk about this here because we haven't like a define, like what, a, what makes up an architecture is like that you clearly define what this architecture is made of, clearly define what it is. And you can't divert from that definition because then it's not the same architecture anymore. This computer is so individual, you, you can make so many small little changes to the instruction set or to the modules or whatever you do and each small change com is then a completely new architecture in a sense, right? So, um, so separating the uh, RAM from the, uh, what did you ask? Separate the control from the RAM. Um, do you mean separating the code from the memory? Uh, so, so code from data, or I'm not quite sure what you mean. Uh, that might actually not be too big of a problem. That's actually maybe something we could try maybe to do, to have a RAM that is where always the instructions are just fetched from but uh, every every memory operations are performed on a different RAM. Uh, so you have like two RAM modules. One is like the code and one is the data. Maybe that's something we could like do. That would be kind of a different architecture. Um, they was they would still use the same bus. So it's not quite the other, the, the, like this, von, the, this other thing of von Neumann, I forgot what the term is. Wouldn't be quite the same thing because there we also use different buses, I think. But um, yeah, so. You know, those are the different kind of thoughts, I guess. Uh, Harvard, that was the name, Harvard, yeah. yeah. I'm not sure, does Harvard not also imply that you have different buses? That you have a diff, that, that you have a, like a, a that, that not only are data and code separated, but they are also used completely their own bus. Like if you look on the graphic, wasn't it like, um, this is all German, sorry. 
Yeah, so the Harvard architecture, my understanding is that all the yellow ones are all their own bus. So the difference here is that everything has like here a shared bus, I guess. I don't know, like, yeah. But if you separate program from RAM physically, that always needs to happen, right? No, we can have the shared bus. Like uh, the, the CPU could use the bus to fetch the instruction from the code RAM and then, but only reads and writes uh, for like move instructions from the data RAM. Like that could still happen on the same bus. Uh, I think this is closer to a von Neumann architecture, even if we would separate that. But uh, what do I know? I have no clue. Way more important than being right here or whatever, I think is actually that we just discuss this and talk about this, you know, kind of like explore what it is. Uh, and which, um, yeah, I, I find this actually very valuable and cool that we have these kind of conversations. Clearly, I don't know the exact definition, so I can't like answer it. I, I, I wouldn't like feel comfortable to say this is how it is, but it's kind of fun to like argue about it with our layman understanding. And, and you know, like with, with a lot of these things, these kind of definitions are not meant to describe the only physical, like, it's it's not like that these two uh, ideas, Harvard or von Neumann, are not like intrinsic to our natural universe. Like, it's not like that there's some underlying mathematical law of of nature that says you can only build a computer that way or that way. Uh, these definitions and the difference, how different they are, doesn't mean that you are, it's not a law that tells you you have to do it exactly that way and you need to follow that. They are meant to enable discussions and uh, arguments around them uh, to differentiate things that are a little bit different. But uh, in the end, you are free to adapt, change, modify them as, as you want. And you will pr might not be able to clearly say it's a Harvard, it's 100% Harvard, it's 100% von Neumann, but you could say it's closer to Harvard or closer von Neumann. And then a person who understands what the definition of that is can has kind of understands what it is. It's it's like a word for, for you know, to convey a certain meaning, but it, 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 it doesn't mean that it has to be 100% that way, that, um, you know. Shall I be nitpicky? and say that a Turing machine requires an infinite uh, band or whatever it's called. And so our breadboard will not be able to emulate a Turing machine. Agreed, but then no computer is a Turing machine. Yeah, there you go. But yeah, this also shows, I guess, again, how, yes, it makes sense to have these kind of definitions for, uh, for you know, if we are arguing about it like a mathematical framework and uh, it makes sense that it, is defined that way and stuff like this and but you know in now in the end of the in for our practical application here whatever you know it doesn't really matter we all understand where like the the limitations are or like you know the nuances of these things like being being that nitpicky if it's now a Turing machine or not is I think um, in most cases a useless kind of argument to have because the person, because the person who is nitpicky is just kind of the person knows what we mean when we say it's a Turing machine. You know you, that we can do arbitrary computation. Yeah, whatever. What is a Turing machine? A Turing machine is a math. How about we do like a Wikipedia reading stream? A Turing machine is a. Wait, did I add that wire? We are at eight wires, but I believe we are now at... Yeah, a Turing machine is a mathematical model of computation that defines an abstract machine which manipulates symbols, blah, blah. Uh, despite the model simplicity, given any algorithm, a Turing machine is capable of executing that algorithm. Um, and so it, it just implements a couple of things that it can do. Um, let's see, does it define somewhere down here? So it, there's like a tape and it can like operate on the tape, like just a couple of different instructions basically that the Turing machine can do. And it's like mathematically proven that any, uh, you know, algorithm that we can define can be executed by that machine. And so it's a way to theorize about, 
uh, if things are computable or not, or yeah. And Turing machines have no wires, coincidence? <laughs> Can a real Turing machine solve the halting problem? Uh, uh, no. Isn't the halting problem defined as that a Turing machine would never end or something like that? I'm not sure what the exact definition is. The, whether the program will finish or continue to run forever. Because a Turing machine is like uh, the mathematical the definition of a computer, the halting problem is undecidable over Turing machines. Uh, but given a finite input and finite state, and us being able to detect repetitions of state, we would detect if the program goes into a loop. Uh, yeah, okay, but now you have added quite a lot of constraint, like infinite states, uh, uh, finite states. I could build an algorithm that has so incredibly many states that even with like a massive uh, supercomputer, the state would only repeat uh, every three ages of the universe or something like this. Um, and so you would not be able to detect a repeating state uh, that, right? Yeah, and some specific problems are obviously decidable. Uh, maybe we can we have certain like uh, tools at our hand that allow us mathematically to check if they fall into the, that specific category, and then we can maybe decide that. But we can't generally uh, do that for everything. Cool. And next we have the LEDs. But I think I need to refill my drink and. Uh, uh, get a fresh breeze really quick. I need some fresh air. It's getting pretty stuffy in here already. Uh, yeah, so I will be right back in a moment. I was still using the wire stripper. Yeah, I, I'm using this wire strip. It's a perfect wire. It, this wire strip is great. And uh, we have to add one more wire that I just wait. Did I add that wire? Uh, and how many wires are we at? We need to be at 12 now. Okay, one more. There we go. Okay, cool. Yeah, see you in a moment. Oh, what was that? Did sellout hacker take over the stream again? Damn, glad I came back in time to stop him. I also brought uh, dog food. There's Mr. Doggy. So now we can make him dance for us. Okay, jump, jump, jump. No, 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 not spin. Yeah, jump, jump. Good jump. Incredible jump. And jump. Good jump. There we go. Good job. Good job. Okay. I don't quite see it on stream, but we can do a spin too. We can do a spin, good spin. Okay, high five, high five. Yeah, good high five. Two men, two leg, two leg, two leg. Good two leg, good job, good job. You did it, good job. Oh, you 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 gotta chew your food. Don't just swallow it. There you are. This one is coming from Chet. Thank Chet for that one. Would have actually been better if I have put this chip just like two, two things a little bit further, and then the spacing here would have been easier uh, with those LEDs here. But I think if we move that chip just like two two rows over and like fix these attach these cables here because they all don't match anymore. Then we have better spacing for these LEDs because they get so tight here. Like that's, uh, and, and now the legs have to go like super far over there. Like already, this is the fifth one. And this one already see how angled over that gets there. And I need like three more now. That's kind of intense. Uh, yeah, so I think this is what I do now. I know, sorry, sorry, we, we gotta remove one wire two wires three wires does it hurt 
Does anybody feel pain? Four wires and now these ones too. Hmm. How did it feel? Ouch. You know, as entertainment, because of this punishment here, I'm not sure if everybody has seen it. Shall we uh, check out the thermal camera again? Uh, I feel like I have to do this at least like once a stream. Anyway, let me turn this on and pay attention to kind of like how you see the chips lighting up while I uh, work on these wires here. Uh, why would I rotate the camera? This is now exactly like how it's set up. Like this is up here, then down here, then here. Uh, I know that the temperature is like tilted. Uh, it's just like because of like how the phone is like tilted and maybe I can fix it at some later point. But yeah. Will it run Fib? Do you mean Fibonacci? That's the one program that Ben Eder was able to be implement on, on this computer. <laughs> just barely, as far as I know. It's like one of these only programs that it can run. The same stuff, uh, it is also a similar discussion about like, uh, for example, electronic locks, like smart home locks. Like people are talking about, like let's say it's a Bluetooth device and it has like a vulnerability or something in it. And then I only think of like, who cares? You have windows that just take me the stone to get in or next to your regular smart lock is also a regular tumbler for a regular key. And so you can just lock pick that. Maybe it's just a basic door. Like, okay, well now, like, I don't know. <laughs> it's, and then people are freaking out over it and they don't freak out over the windows that they have. Like, I don't know, like that stuff like that always kind of like, I don't know, makes me, makes me a little bit, I'm wondering. Oh, who was that? Sorry, he took over my stream. That must have been sellout hacker again. <sighs> I'm so bad at acting, really. I wish I could do this better. Okay, so let's uh, continue watching this video here. <laughs> what architecture is he using? How about of phenomenon? We had this we had this discussion earlier. Um, it's probably closer to the, um, it's probably more like the von Neumann architecture. But I mean, we build it ourselves. We could always change stuff. Okay, somebody says Harvard. See, uh, the, the, the opinions are different. I, generally, I would say, yes, those are different things, different definitions, but uh, you are then, like in reality, this, things are always blurry. Is this Cisco Rift? That, that's the same. That's li yeah. That's the same discussion that you have about Cisco Rift. Yes, it makes sense to have different terms to describe different things, and they have kind of different definitions. But in reality, r real life and nature is always a little bit more fluid and a little bit more on a spectrum than you might think. It's not always black and white. So you have these definitions. They kind of make sense for language to convey certain ideas. Uh, and stuff like this, but in the end, maybe in reality, they might not follow these uh, these things like exactly. Okay, this basically applies to anything in life. Has anybody of you ever watched like uh, the Twitch streamer Slightly Musical? Uh, his name is Albert. Uh, like he also like works on trying to make his like room more interactive and um, tries to have like cool creative ideas to. Yeah, make his room more interactive. And so for example, he hasn't doesn't have alerts for like subscriptions and donations overlaid on the stream, but he uses a thermal printer, like a need like a needle printer, like a you know, like from that you know from uh, cash register and stuff like that. And so he has that attached above his desk or where he's sitting, and every time when somebody's subscribing, uh, it will print that out and it will like f uh, fly down and fall down. Uh, that's such a such a cool idea. And so he, uh, he also has like, uh, like a thing that can spray water and for like $3, you can make it squirt water at him. Uh, or he also has done like 
electroshocks at some point. And then there is, uh, I'm not sure, do you know uh, Adam? Adam13531, uh, who is like uh, developing Botland on stream. He also has a little bit of like stream interaction. Uh, you get like commands to like control his light, the color of his light, for example. Uh, do you enjoy this streaming more than YouTube comments? Uh, it's different. It's just different. So um, I was kind of inspired to stream again from actually Miskiff. I'm not sure if anybody. Oh, thanks for the cheer, Mindsoft. Um, so Miskiff is like a streamer. I mean, I understand it's like if, if not everybody likes it, but he does like a lot of improv acting on stream. Uh, this is kind of where I, you know, I, I try to do it, but I'm by no way as the NPC work, but I'm by no way as like uh, creative or good as him with the, this acting. So like, you know, if you have seen like the, the makeup tutorial or the story I told at the beginning with like the black and white screen or like all the small stuff that I've done, like with the wire stripper, all these things that um, uh, that I that I try to do is kind of inspired by that. It's it's like this improv acting, trying to make the stream a little bit more interesting, and um, I guess he does it unintentionally. This this kind of acting it just has kind of involved for him, but it works so well, and I find it so entertaining. And I kind of watched him for just a couple of hour, um, couple of uh, weeks, and I thought this is so much fun. And like if you know me in real life, I'm a very like I'm very introvert. I don't go out much. I don't like to talk to people a lot. Like I like to be by myself, um, uh, and and I'm also not a very outgoing person. Like I'm, I'm I I prefer to like sit in the corner and just observe the room. I don't I don't like to be the center of attention and all the kind of stuff. Right? That's me in real life. But being here in like my my room alone, um, in 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 my safe zone where I'm you know feel very comfortable, it allows me a little bit to open up a bit more and be a bit more uh, like how I am maybe for example uh, like with my closest friends or something like this right so it feels it feels really nice it just feels different from YouTube comments it's just like streaming is somewhat kind of it's, it's different it's really refreshing right now also I'm in a very stressful time with like my master thesis and work and all that kind of stuff so so the streaming thing is kind of an interesting outlet uh, in a way and and allows me to be creative in new ways I haven't been creative before like on on YouTube right like the YouTube channel has I'm really proud of YouTube channel but it has become somewhat of a restricted thing what I can do on there uh, and so Having now the second channel and this this Twitch stream allows me a little bit more to experiment a little bit more again and just try something weird, uh, and and that feels really good. That that is quite fun. I wouldn't imagine you don't talk to people since you're. I mean, I do talk to people, but I mean, like I I wouldn't be like the like if you would tell me that I would do like like acting out makeup tutorials or like tell a story with like music just do like this try to do this epic unboxing or all this kind of stuff like if you would have told me that I would do that kind of stuff that that doesn't fit my real life me right that this is not me in a weird way so, so I have the, like this streamer persona and it's just different it's like a it's not it's not quite a character right it's, it's it, I'm not like completely acting uh, but it's it's just such a different environment that I'm in that allows me to just be a little bit different. And that's, I don't know, that's quite fun. I, I don't really know how to explain it. I still haven't quite figured it out. You know, I've streamed for like, it's like the 10th day or something like that. So um, it's, uh, yeah, it's it's interesting. The other four bits on the other chip. Uh, as well as Wait, our, our allow chat to type five characters into cmd.exe and after a big donation, let's see how long it would take until we have a reverse shell. That would be actually quite funny. If, if the stakes are high enough, like if it's like, if you could actually get something from it, like it, it would be actually my machine or something, like this laptop or so, that would be, that when the incentives are high enough, that would be kind of funny, I think. I was talking to a secret person and I got a delivery. So uh, so I was brought uh, uh, 
two different kinds of sunglasses and <coughs> they were like at a, at a sale. They were super cheap. So I got two different kinds and I don't know if they like fit me or whatever. Uh, I was just brought two different ones. So now I gotta check if they fit me or if, if they are my style or whatever. So I feel like they look quite big maybe already, but I w uh, let's see. So you need to decide if they, if they look silly or not. By the way, uh, to figure out the style, uh, I was looking up like Michael Cera sun uh, sunglasses and compared to uh, what kind of style Michael Cera wears because everybody's comparing me to Michael Cera. So I figured if he's a cool actor, and he wears the best fitting sunglasses given by a designer uh, or like an outfit uh, planner or whatever, then uh, that means that would also fit me. But I don't know, it, it's weird. Oh yeah, full screen camera, there we go. So let's see. Ah, crap, that's not work. <coughs> so these are the first ones. Are they? Big for my face? Too big? I don't know. Okay, so these are the first one. Uh, maybe not. I don't know. I don't know how fitting thing. Okay, so these are the first ones. That's like too big. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, then, then the others might also be. But from the style. Okay, so if they are. But what would you really say from the style? Would you say that these are also too big or are they fine? Are you just saying they are not too big? Better, but still a little bit. Okay, <laughs> we can get used to it. <laughs> okay, so would these be from the style be theoretically uh, better just like too big or what? The gradient is nice though. I think these would in principle be like the style I like to wear, I think. Oh wow, the reflection is like crazy. Now you can see my setup. You are asking a bunch of computer nerds for fashion advice. Yeah, exactly, because I have no clue myself. That's why I have to ask. That's why I placed the stream and just chatting. It, it yeah, it would be illegal by Twitch Terms of Service to put this into the uh, science and technology uh, category. Uh, again, thanks for so much for hanging out with me today. Um, and uh, maybe check out the podcast that I did yesterday. Um, uh, and uh, see you soon. So bye bye.